from the Gospel of John, the 8th chapter, the 12th verse. Hear now these words of the Lord. Again, Jesus spoke to them, saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. The word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Let us pray. Lord, you are our rock and our redeemer. And I ask you to give me your words this morning so that we all may walk as children of the light. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have you ever been in complete, utter darkness? I have, and it's quite an experience. I used to be a counselor at a camp in the mountains of North Carolina. And one of the outings we did with our campers was to go to a cave. And it was an old moonshiner's cave. And it was out in the woods, up outside of Zirconia, North Carolina. And we would go into that cave, and it was actually a cave that was sort of down in the ground. So you had to climb down into it. And we would take our group, and we would get the campers, everybody placed, sitting in a circle in this cold, dank cave um, that was usually about 20 degrees cooler than the outside. And then we would have them turn out their lights. All the flashlights would be turned out. And it was an eerie, disconcerting feeling. It was literally so dark you couldn't see your hand in front of your face. And it made me feel sort of untethered because there were no points of reference in that kind of dark. When you have been in complete darkness like that, you really come to appreciate the light. Even though I visited that cave many times over the years that I was a counselor, and I knew what to expect, I was always thankful when we turned our flashlights back on and could see again. The return of the light brought a sense of relief and peace. There's a lot to be thankful for with light. As we know, we need light to be able to see. We need light so that plants can grow. We also, studies have shown, need light to improve our mood, and we even need light in order to be able to see colors. So light is indispensable in our lives. So when Jesus says, I and the light of the world, Jesus is saying that he is indispensable. And that's a bold statement. He was also equating himself with God because in the Hebrew scriptures, light was often used as a metaphor for God. For example, Psalm 27 says, the Lord is my light and my salvation, whom then shall I fear? Now this metaphor is still used in the New Testament. In particular, the first chapter of John's Gospel begins with these words. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overtake it. So even before Jesus made the statement that he was the light of the world, John had already made that claim, that Jesus is our light. Christ, Jesus Christ gives us the illumination we need to see where we're going. 
Christ is a beacon that we can follow. When our lives get dark, Jesus Christ is the light we search out and move to. Christ's presence and the light it brings gives us comfort, dispels the darkness, and enables us to find our way during difficult times. And while Jesus is the light of the world, he never intended to be the sole source of light in this world. He never intended to be the only light. In Matthew 5, verses 14 through 16, it's part of the Sermon on the Mount, and Jesus is teaching all the people around him. And he says, you, are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bushel. Instead, they put it on a, on a stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Now, he wasn't talking just to the people that were sitting around him that day. He's talking to all of us. Now, those are strong words. And I know when I read those, I sort of go, whew, <laughs> I don't know that I can shine as brightly as Jesus Christ because <laughs> I'm just a normal person. And that's true. We can't shine as brightly as Jesus on our own power. The Holy Spirit, though, which is God living in us, enables us, each and every one of us, to reflect Christ's light, just as the moon reflects the sun's light. Christ is the source of our light. We can't shine on our own, but we can shine because of Christ in us. Now, the scriptures corroborate this idea. Ephesians 5, verses 8 and 9 says, For once you were full of darkness, but now you have the light of the Lord. So live as people of the light. For this light within you produces only what is good and right and true. By living like Jesus did and loving both God and neighbors, like the people around us, we shine Jesus' light and help illuminate the world. Now again, this isn't something we do under our own power. It is through the power of the Holy Spirit that we are able to live like Jesus and reflect the light of Christ. When we are in relationship with the Lord, we can live like this. And when we do, we are able to serve as beacons of light in a dark world. By following the way of Jesus and living like he did, we become Christ's emissaries and can bring light to the darkness. Now, I think we all want to live in the light. I believe we were created that way, to, to seek out the light. But if you look around, the world looks like a dark place much of the time. I know when I look around, I wonder where the light is. Our earth is gasping for breath because of climate change. People attack one another in battles, but also just on the streets or in their yards when they feel slighted or threatened. Our local governments and schools have become places of bullying and partisan politics. And we are seeing a proliferation of hate groups. In fact, I was reading in the state newspaper this week 
about a neo-Nazi rally that was held in Georgia recently, right outside of a synagogue. And the article I read was talking about this man named Stuart Levy, who was actually on his way to a party when he saw the rally and he stopped to protest what they were doing. He says he initially had some choice words for the neo-Nazis, but then he had a change of heart. He went back and tried to engage with them in a positive way because he says, and I quote, the most potent response to darkness is light. My friends, it's when darkness is all around us that accessing the light is so important. Light ha like having a flashlight in a dark cave, it gives us the ability to orient ourselves and find our way. And especially in these dark times, our being bearers of the light of Christ is important. Any of us, by shining Christ's light, can provide enough illumination to help someone find their way. Now, I was out visiting this past week and was talking to one of our members, and we started talking about light and Christ's light. And we talked about how we know people who are filled with divine light. All of us are. But people who are filled with the love of the Lord are light bearers. And they can shine that light on those around them. They brighten the lives of everyone they come in contact with. And each of us can be that kind of person just by loving God and allowing God's love and light to fill us and then emanate from us. And by doing so, we can make a difference here and now. Now, one of my favorite worship services growing up involved light. It was the Christmas Eve candlelight service at my home church, Grace United Methodist Church in Union. I looked forward to that service all year long. One, because it was right before Christmas, but because it was just such a beautiful and meaningful service. Now, Grace has an old uh, historic sanctuary just like this one, and it would be decorated very similarly with the chrismon tree, and candles, red bows, the whole thing. And then right before the final hymn, which was usually silent night, just like it is here, all of the lights in the sanctuary would be extinguished, except the light of the Christ candle by the altar. So the sanctuary was in complete darkness except for one candlelight, the Christ candle. That was such a holy moment, sitting there in the dark with that tiny illumination, because that candle was small in re relationship to the size of the sanctuary. But even that tiny light gave us enough to orient ourselves. We could see our hands in front of our faces. We could make out the people near us. So we were not in complete darkness. And that candle represented the light that was born that night with the birth of Jesus Christ. So we saw that just a little light dispels the darkness, enough to stay oriented. However, that single candle was just the beginning. As we started to sing that final hymn, the ushers would go to the Christ candle and light their candles from it, providing a little more light. And then they took those candles and lit the candles of every person on the ends of the aisles 
who then shared their light with those sitting in their pew. And by the end of that hymn, the sanctuary was awash in light. It was bright. But it didn't end there. After the benediction, we all took our candles outside into the dark December night, carrying the light of Christ out into the dark world. And it made a difference in that street. It brightened the street. And it made a difference for all people out there, whether they had been in the church service or not. The street was lighter. Those small individual lights that we carried beat back the darkness. And my friends, we can do that each and every day. That was a literal example. But we can carry the light of Christ everywhere we go, every time we leave this sanctuary, and just even if we haven't been here. We are filled with the light, and we are called to share it. When we share our light, we can make the world brighter and more welcoming, not by sheer force of will. We don't shine on our own, but by letting the Holy Spirit guide, direct, and empower us so that we can live as people of the light. Remember, we get our light from Christ. We just reflect what we receive. And when we reflect Christ's light, we will enable people to see what's truly important, and then they too can live as children of the light. Thanks be to God. <laughs>